Welcome back, everyone. This is Andrea Sagadelli. And this is Liz Faircloth. We are the hosts of the Real Estate Investor Show. So we're going to be talking about what does it really take to avoid the main traps when you invest with your spouse and you're trying to have a healthy relationship. Ooh. And it's not equal for everyone, right, Andressa? We're going to give a perspective today, both from a married, almost married 18 years perspective and what <laughs> other perspective, Andressa? Well, I am the outsider, right? <laughs> I've been divorced for about seven years. And I think I look from the outside from a very objective place. So I am in contact with a lot of women inside the community. And what I keep hearing it is a commonality that happens. So we're going to tackle that and have this frank and honest conversation. So what is the first trap, Liz, that we're going to talk about? Okay. So the first trap, and I think this is relatable if you are a 50-50 partner with your spouse or you're more active and your partner is more of a support role, is lack of communication. I know we use that word so much, Andressa, and it's so overused, really. <laughs> but I think it needs to be said because most of the time, I think married couples are under communicating. Mm. And take a step further, I think there's one particular spouse that is under communicating. And that really holds couples back from every step of the way, getting really clear on the financial goals, the risk tolerance. I mean, think about all the risks that you're taking, especially right now. And it's not a $5,000 decision. These are usually 30 plus thousand dollar decisions. It's a big deal. And the lack of communication gets in the way for so many married couples because it doesn't allow them to take the next steps forward or there's resentment that gets built up. So let me ask you a question about that, right? Does that happen because when you're married for so long, you kind of know what the other person is thinking and then you're like become this like unity and therefore you don't believe you have to have conversations because if I'm thinking that, you're also thinking that. Is that what happens in your world? I don't think it's that. I think the lack of communication actually happens every step of the way as you're building your portfolio, as you're investing in real estate. I'll give you a very specific example. Matt had shared with me, we had our business meetings. This was about seven-ish years into our investing. And we were at that point, 50-50. We've wear worn different hats. And he sat me down. He said, Liz, I have something to tell you. Mm. And I'm like, I was thinking at first, like, do you want a divorce? You know? <laughs> I don't know where this can go. But he goes, I have something. And when my husband gets serious, it's like a big deal because he's a pretty yes. fun loving guy. Yes. So I have something I need to talk to you about. I said, okay. He goes, we're about $40,000 short of a rehab. And I have no idea where I'm going to get this money. And I got this lender that's due. I got this situation going. The contractor just took money. And I kind of knew peripherally what was going on with this particular project, but I didn't know to that extent. And I didn't know the numbers. So he goes, and I'm really embarrassed to share this with you, but I, ne I need to share it with you. So I know you'll come up with some creative ideas. So then like, then the ball was thrown to me, right? And, 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 and in him sharing that and not having a lack of communication, being transparent and authentic, we, bo we both put our heads together and figured out a solution. And we did figure out a solution. Not an easy solution, but we figured it out. So I just share that because he could have had a lack of communication and just hid that. I'm going to throw you a curveball here. All right. Didn't you guys get to that point because of lack of communication? If he Ooh. had shared that with you earlier on. True. Wouldn't. That's a really good point. Yeah. <laughs> just like, Matt, you're Damn. wrong. No, Matt, we love you, Matt. We fucking love you. No, that's, right? a, really gr that's a really great point. I think the, the, the recommendation or the action for everyone to take as a result of this episode is that you need to, and we weren't doing monthly business meetings at that time, right. Andressa. Yeah. Um, okay. And I'm going to recommend that on my third one, but that was something, had we been more proactive with our communication? Yes, that would have been nipped in the bud. But I, I don't think we were proactive. We were response. We were we were in the reactive in a lot of ways in our business at that time. So great. That's a really that's a really a really really good point. And to avoid that, right, it's that continuous. Um, so here's the second one, the second trap that you really want to be mindful of, and and this has happened to us. And I have an example, is overextending finances. Mm. So typically, when you're investing with your spouse, there is going to be naturally a more risk taker. 
And it's probably going to be somebody who's a little more cautious. That's pretty common. Even if you're both risk taking, there, there's always a, a hierarchy of risk and caution, which is a good thing, actually, in my opinion. But I think right now, I think there's a lot of, there's so much emotion tied to, to, to money. And, oh, and also when people are overextending finances to make it work, to pound it through, to, to, to get to that dream of passive income, a lot of that gets tied up together and can really cause a lot of strain. Um, you know, I'll, I'll share a little bit about something that what we've learned in a positive way. We have a goal to buy a business this year, unrelated to real estate, something him and I have been talking about for so long. Had that be, had, had we been having this conversation five years ago, we would approach it very differently. We would get on the phone with a bunch of people. We've been brainstorming all these different things. It's not what we're doing. That wasn't the first three steps for us. What we're doing is we're really getting a sense of where are our finances? We know them, but we want to get even more granular. And so we can be conservative and cautious and making sure we're not overextended. It's not just me and my husband's personal money. We have multiple businesses we're involved. We have multiple things that we're doing. And we're not going to just be kind of flippant about this this particular step. We're being ultra cautious, slow, and methodical, which is not a natural thing for me and my husband, to be p- be frank. But it's a smart thing. So you can learn to not you can learn this is what I, I just want to make a point and to um, make sure your, your, your finances kind of govern those decisions. A hundred percent. I think there's a lot of talking about cash flow for each property, but there's very little talked about the cash flow needed for the business to survive and thrive. So when we are talking about investing in different business or investments and growing your portfolio, what really matters is your business cash flow and how much reserve you have for what's about to come that you don't even know, right? So I remember one of the deals that we had that it was the one of the smoother ones is because we prepared a reserve account with all the payments up front. So we had nothing to worry about. And we had that rolled into the private money lending that we got. So like everything was on the account, good to go. And I think we need to start applying those strategies that we have for properties into the business that we are in, having those reserves that might, things might come up, right? Who knows? So true. So here's the third one, neglecting quality time. And it's not just quality time, it's quantity time. And what I mean by that is so often I'll see couples who are investing, building a business together, you know, creating this, this, you know, financial freedom for themselves. It's so, it's so big for them and so much that, so much what they want that their relationship suffers in the process because they want this lifestyle, because they want to have freedom on the way there, their relationship gets beat up and they're not taking the quantity time to, to be together. So I'm going to give you a very specific example of what, what commitment looks like for, for me and my husband. Um, we do monthly business and finance meetings. So that's 12. We have a goal of 15 date nights for the year and we do four quarterly getaways. And a getaway, a quarterly getaway, we just got back from one is a 24 hour time frame with with no children and it's sleeping somewhere uh, somewhere beside your own house. I don't care where you're going. You could go to go go somewhere for free. I don't care. It doesn't have to cost a ton. Um but it means getting away for a 24 hour time frame. And all of this creates that quantity time as a married couple because that's first and as an, as you're investing with your spouse and creating the lifestyle you want is second. It is secondary to, to, to being married, in my opinion. Cause as soon as that goes flipped and your investments take over, you're going to be transactional and you're going to be treating each other as business partners only. Uh, that's not what you signed up for, right? You want both. And so to get that, you have to put the quality, quantity, excuse me, time in. Well, Liz, let's talk about that because we keep hearing over and over again that you need to invest in quality time and quality time is what matters. What we are saying here, it's not. Quality time is a trap. What we are saying is that you need to invest in quantity time with your spouse in order to build a stronger relationship. Is that what I'm hearing? 
Yeah. And that, and the reason for that, very, very specifically why that is, and I'll give you a very good example. When we went away for our quarterly getaway, if I had like an hour with my husband, what do you do in an hour? You pack a lot in. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like you're on an agenda, but it's intentional. That's the difference, right? Exactly. And so when we had our time together over the weekend, we drove to the location, we went to the DC area, we stayed there. There were certain things we always like to do. What's working, what's not? What, what are things that we're not telling each other that we really need to share, right? You can't do that with a half hour. Let's, let's talk about what's working, what's not. What should we be doing? It's like, woo, that's way too rushed. It gave us the space. Space means something in relationships. Andressa and I, right? You and I have our, our kind of, uh, like we're going to do our fun thing as business partners and friends this coming weekend. We have a block of time. We're not going to be like, let's get this done in 10 minutes because conversations are going to come up, right? So I, I just encourage you to listen. Honestly, schedule, schedule a getaway, schedule a 24 hour time block. So you have quantity time to really see what comes up and have the space for each other. People don't make space for each other. And that's the problem that we want to avoid. So you can truly invest with your spouse, build that business and build your relationship. Powerful. So what, what do you want people to do after this? I would love. <laughs> here's besides the, like calling the husband or the <laughs> wife and like, listen to this. I want, here's the call to action is very, very specific. I want you to take a picture of you and your spouse. And I want you to share what you learned, what you got out of it. What's just, hey, hey, we, you know, listen to this episode inside our Facebook community. Because by doing that, by sharing what you're doing to fuel your relationship and build your business, you're going to inspire other women to do the same. So I would love to see that picture and tag, tag us. Awesome. Thank you so much for listening. Bye. Bye everyone.